DNC chair candidates were debating one another at George Washington University, and while the debate was happening, Huffington Post's Ryan Grimm asked an interesting question regarding Haim Saban and his comments on Keith Ellison. He had called Keith Ellison anti-Semitic. Now, what was the reaction to that? Take a look. Please raise your hand if you think Saban should apologize for those remarks. I, I think it's important uh, that we realize that this is bigger than our own uh, selves. And so attack against one of us, I really think is an attack against all of us. And I think that we stand united with Congressman Ellison. I just think everybody should know that Haim and I did have a phone call. I won't disclose what we talked about, but it was amicable. And uh, we're going to get together and build on our relationship. Keith is a great guy who works hard each and every day for his constituents. And I don't believe that there's an anti-Semitic bone in his body because he's going to fight for the good for everybody. And so we need to, as a party, stop with all of the demonization of each other and focus on the real war right now. And that is against Donald Trump. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to get to uh, Jamu Green's uh, reaction to it because she was the only one other than Keith Ellison who did not raise her hand. And her answer, in my opinion, is maddening. But we'll get to that in a second. First, a little context and background. Haim Saban is a billionaire mega donor. And uh, he had called Ellison anti-Semitic uh, maybe because he's Muslim, but also because of the following. So Ellison had participated in the Louis Farrakhan organized Million Man March on Washington in 1995 alongside Barack Obama. Farrakhan has a long record of anti-Semitism and has been labeled as an anti-Semite by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Now when he, Ellison, was a law school student in the 1990s, he defended Farrakhan against charges of anti-Semitism. However, he later retracted those comments and apologized for them, saying he do did not adequately scrutinize his views. Now, uh, let's be clear about something. People say a lot of dumb things when they're in college, and mm. it's okay to retract those insanely dumb comments later. I don't know what you would be referring to. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> of course, uh, having retracted some comments myself uh, that I said in college, yeah. uh, but it, it, I, I'm not the only one backing Keith Ellison here, and not only just other people at the, at the DNC, but uh, Chuck Schumer and Bernie Sanders, two, uh, I would argue, the two most successful uh, Jewish American senators uh, right now. Bernie Sanders, the most successful Jewish uh, American candidate in history. Uh, Chuck Schumer, now the leader of the Democrats in the Senate. Both back Keith Ellison say he's not remotely anti Semitic. So, look, and, and he retracted those comments, they're from a million years ago. That's not what this is about. Uh, so, I'm going to guess at what Haim Saban uh, cares about here based on a lot of evidence about the past. He doesn't care about what Farrakhan, and by the way, Farrakhan is totally anti Semitic. Back when I was going to college, I went uh, to see a Farrakhan speech. First half of it, I was like, and back then I'm a Republican. I'm like, this whole thing about you got to help yourself, don't pull yourself up by the bootstraps. I was like, I kind of like this mm -hmm, as a Republican, mm -hmm. right? The second half of the speech, he's like, you know where the word Jules come from? It comes from the Jews. I was like, what in the world? Jeez. So he's definitely, I heard it for myself, he's definitely anti Semitic. Or he certainly was back then, back in the 1990s. I guess as he hasn't changed much. Anyway, uh, so it's not about that. It's about Ellison's position on Israel. And I, look, I don't know Haim Saban at all. I, I think I'd be surprised that if he was so Islamophobic that he just called Ellison anti Semitic just because he's Muslim. I doubt that. Yeah. I don't know him, but I doubt it, so I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt there. Uh, but on the issue of Israel, I think he I think he's done something really, really wrong here. Because I know Haim Saban cares deeply about Israel. Nothing wrong with that. A lot of us do, right? I know that even though he is progressive in other areas and, and is the biggest donor to the Democrats, mm -hmm. he is right wing on Israel. So it, like the proof's in the pudding, man. Netanyahu couldn't agree with him more. Can't do anything wrong. Netanyahu, Netanyahu, Netanyahu. That, that is an extreme right-wing government in Israel. Mm -hmm. The left wing of Israel does not agree. Moderates in Israel do not agree. Haim Saban does not speak for all Israelis. He doesn't speak for all Jews. And I, and I would hope and I would guess that he doesn't claim to, right? So when Ellison does not agree with Haim Saban, and this is an old trick and it's a I, Really dirty trick, and it happens all the time. If you don't agree with the right wing position in Israel, anti Semitic. Yeah. Anti Semitic. And so 
I'm done with it. Now I don't have to bother them uh, arguing the merits of it. How do I justify an endless occupation? I can't, so I'll just call you an anti-Semite. How do I justify uh, disproportionate use of force? Bernie Sanders said it was clearly disproportionate. The whole world agrees in the last Gaza incursion, let alone the other incursions. And Bernie Sanders gave specific stats on that. So is Bernie Sanders anti-Semitic? Bernie Sanders' position on Israel might be to the left of Keith Ellison, but it's hard to call him anti-Semitic because he's Jewish. He's Jewish, exactly. Right. And look, it, it's it's a tactic and it's a strategy to immediately shut down the conversation because no one wants to be labeled anti-Semitic, right? That's mm. that's a terrible label to have, especially when you are not anti-Semitic. And in this case, Keith Ellison is definitely not anti-Semitic, right? So again, I want to go back to those who raised their hands and those who did not. Again, everyone on that stage, except for Keith Ellison and uh, Jammu Green, raised their hands because they believe that uh, Saban needs to apologize. Now, why didn't Green raise her hand? Weird. Well, she gave an answer. I may have been the only one who did not raise my hand, and that's because I think as Democrats, we need to stop falling for these gotcha questions. I think when the media wants to divide us in this way, divide our funders from our potential leaders, <clears throat> we need to just stop biting, taking the bait. So I'm not going to take the bait on that question of division. I'm not going to take the debate, the bait on the Sanders versus the Clinton divide. And I, I would look to all of my candidates up here and say, let's stop taking the, the bait. We can control the conversation. Kind of amazing how out of touch she is because she just she was just so incredibly transparent about how her priority is ensuring a nice, tidy, close relationship between the funders and potential politicians. Yeah, I, I couldn't disagree with her more. And you know, look, we've talked about how the media sets up false uh, questions that have no good answers. This was the exact opposite. Ryan Grimm actually asked a really interesting, thoughtful, out of the box question that got to the heart of what's wrong with the DNC, that they're beholden to the donors. And he put them on the spot. That's exactly what a journalist should do. Are you going to be beholden to the donors? This is your biggest donor. And actually, the other six stepped up and did something brave yes. and spoke out against the top donor to the Democratic Party. They should receive a lot of credit for that. And Ryan should uh, receive a lot of credit for asking the question. So she says, no, 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 remember, we've got to be tight with the donors. The second thing she said is, I'm not going to fall for the bait and talk about the Sanders-Clinton divide. But that's the heart of the race. Yes. That's not, that's not like, huh, I'm doing a gotcha for you. Which side are you on? Are you going to continue to take giant amount of corporate money? Or are you going to take money from uh, the American people and try to rebuild a party? That is central to whether you should run the DNC or not. How the hell are you going to run the DNC if you don't give us the answer to that? Well, if that you, means you're avoiding the questions. If you avoid that question and you prevent yourself from learning about what caused that divide, then there is no hope that you will fight to save the Democratic Party or reform the Democratic Party in the way that's necessary to ensure that someone like Donald Trump doesn't win again in the future. A lot of people who ended up voting for Donald Trump were extremely transparent about the fact that they actually wanted to vote for Bernie Sanders. The New York Times had this incredible piece where they profiled um, female Trump supporters. And look, I have been harsh toward female Trump supporters. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, However, it was an illuminating report because it profiled them and talked about why it is that they went for Trump, even though they're against his rhetoric and uh, some of his actions in the past. They couldn't get themselves to vote for Hillary Clinton, right? They wanted to vote for Bernie Sanders. And so given the choice between what they viewed as an anti-establishment candidate and a very pro-establishment candidate, they went for Donald Trump, who they believed was anti-establishment. So. Look, the Democratic Party, the DNC, I, depending on how Trump's administration does with foreign policy and health care and all these things, they have blood on their hands. I, I really believe that they do because manipulating the primaries the way that they did and completely discounting the number of people who supported and, and wanted Bernie Sanders to be the nominee was a terrible, terrible decision. So now when uh, Trump does whatever he's going to do, Look, I love. I know that they love to uh, blame Bernie Sanders or his supporters or the young or the blacks or the Latinos for not showing up or the women for not voting enough and the Russians and James. They love to make a thousand excuses, but all those folks didn't lose to Donald Trump. You, Democratic establishment, you lost to Donald Trump. So, you know, you own it. And and if you choose not to go in a different direction, you're going to own that too. If you've learned nothing at all from this. Well, then we'll know whether you're on our side or not on our side. 
And and by the way, one last uh, point here because I, I know someone in, that was in the room, and when the, when they were all going to raise their hands or not raise their hands, Thomas Perez, who is mm -hmm. the establishment pick, Barack Obama wants him to be the the nominee uh, to run the DNC because he thinks Ellison is too liberal and too populist. So he's like, let's just get a good corporate guy like Perez in, and they pretend he's progressive, etc. He, Perez apparently, as people were raising their hands, looked around the room and it was like, oh yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> okay. Look, if they put Ellison as the head of the DNC, they have a hope that they can turn around. If they don't, then we'll know exactly which direction they're going. It'll be incredibly obvious. Let's go take on the corporate media. Come join us, be a member, and change the media. TYTnetwork.com slash join.